Now, here's a fact. The late Carl Sagan never said billions and billions of stars. But in this picture behind me, there are millions of stars, four and a half million to be exact. Could there be some Earth-like planets around them? Well, not long ago, we launched a spacecraft that just might tell us if there is. We want Star Trek to become reality, right? We want to go out there and find other life forms. We want to know if we're alone. San Jose State Astronomer Natalie Battaglia is about to help us search for another planet Earth. She's part of the NASA team that planned, designed, and built a new kind of space telescope called Kepler. Six, five, four, three. Two, with engine start, one, zero, and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Kepler on a search for planets in some way like our own. In March of 2009, Kepler launched way into space. From more than a million miles from Earth, Kepler will search for worlds far, far away. We've just embarked on a three and a half year journey to find out if Earth-like planets in our galaxy are common. Earth. We're here because we're just far enough from the sun for life to sprout. But our sun is just one of millions of stars, and astronomers have found dozens of planets around those distant suns. Most of them, though, are huge, stormy gas giants like Jupiter, where life like we know it probably would never happen. We want to find not just Earth-sized planets, we want to find habitable Earth-sized planets. That's not easy. The closest stars are light years away, and they're too bright for normal telescopes to pick out tiny planets. We can't just take a telescope and point it at the sky and take a picture and say, ah, there's a planet. We can't do that, it's too difficult. The light contrast between a star and a planet is too tiny. So how do you find the ultimate needle in a haystack? In Kepler's case, you watch the same four and a half million stars for three and a half years. You take a picture every half hour and you watch for anything that dims starlight the same time over and over again. The dimming that would be caused by an Earth-like planet in front of a Sun-like star would last about 12 hours. So we're taking a measurement every 30 minutes for three and a half years and we're looking for something that lasts 12 hours every 365 days. But how do you tell if it's a planet that dims the sunlight or if it's, say, a vibration on board the spacecraft itself? So inside here, what we have is a very simple telescope, really. Um, and in this case, our telescope is upside down. Instead of being pointed to the sky, it's pointed downwards. Professor Battaglia's team got a nifty idea. They tested the Kepler concept in a laboratory telescope that shields out any outside shutters or vibrations. The scope only sees light that shines through dots on a painted sheet of glass. And the idea is to have the light pass through the holes and to make fake stars, artificial stars. Tiny electric wires snake over the glass dots. A little current makes them expand just enough to dim the light, the way a planet might dim a distant star. So as that wire expands due to that very, very tiny current, the brightness of the source underneath is going to dim, right? Because you're blocking out some of the light. With the Hubble telescope, we could send a shuttle up to fix it. That's right. This thing's gone. We're no, done. That's right. No second chances. Got to get it right the first time. <laughs> it looks like we did. It looks like we did. The first Kepler images stunned astronomers and make them hungry for more. We've been analyzing that data and it's just, it's surpassing all expectations. So, so my optimism has grown in proportion. Kepler may find planets, but it probably won't find any little green men. Once it detects Earth-like worlds, it'll take another future mission to help us see what those worlds look like and if they're home to any life. We're going to find out if Earth-like planets are common. Does our galaxy even make them efficiently? We don't know. We only know of one.